What's going on guys? Me and Landon are out here on the Ohio River today doing a little drifting and dragging. It's been kind of a slow day. We're catching some fish. We've got four in the boat so far, nothing real big. So I just got snagged up and broke off and I'm getting ready to tie up another rig and I figured it'd be a good opportunity to show you guys one of the rigs that I use a lot. It allows you to get a big piece of bait in the water, but you can still catch small fish on it. So let's get to it guys. I'll show you exactly what I do from the equipment I use, the line, everything I do, what kind of knots. So starting off, we've got 60 pound Andy Monster leader line. So I'm gonna pull off several feet because we are dragging today, but this rig is not only used for dragging. I use it as a three-way rig. I use it anchoring. I use it for everything. It's very simple. It's nothing new, but I know a lot of guys probably don't know how to tie it. Cause I have a lot of people ask me all the time. I put this in one of my recent videos and I had a lot of people asking me how to tie it. And it's very, very simple. Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna snail that first hook on just like you would if you were uh, making a basic Carolina rig, just a single hook rig. If you don't know how to snail a hook, guys, it's very, very simple. I use the, the knotless knot, I think they call it. A lot of people don't like it, but I've been using it for years, never had a problem with it that I know of. So you're gonna go through the front of the eye on the hook, run that out about an inch, bring it down and hold it with your finger against the back of the shank. Grab the long end of the line here and just start wrapping it around the shank. And I like to wrap it really tight. I like to wrap it seven or eight times. And then we're going to take our long tag end again, bring it through the back of the eye, and pull that thing tight. And that's done. That's all there is to it, guys. Normally, that would be a, that'd be ready to go. You know, you tie that onto your swivel, you'd be ready to go. But in this case, we're going to put a second hook on it. And we're going to do it the same way. Run that line through the front of the eye. Bring it down to however far you want it to be from the bottom hook. And that just depends on the bait size you're running. I like about six inches most of the time. If I was fishing for smaller fish using smaller hooks, I'd run those, you know, I'd run them closer together because I'd be using a smaller piece of bait. But we're using skipjack today, so I'm gonna run them about six inches apart. So you run that through the front of the eye, just like we did on the first hook. You wanna hold that tag end again and just do seven wraps again. Seven or eight, don't have to be exact, at least seven. And then run it through the back of the eye, pull it tight. And that's all there is to it, guys. That's a double hook rig, and I'll show you why it's so important here in a minute. Now, since we're dragging today, I'm gonna put a peg float on this one. And excuse my boat guys, we got in some mud the other day and it's an absolute mess on the inside, but the, the fish don't mind at all. Alright, so this is a two and a half inch oval peg float. These things will almost float a whole skipjack, I mean a big skipjack. You add a little bit of current or a little bit of uh, momentum from the boat, they will, they'll float a whole skipjack. I like it about six inches above the hook. like that and I don't always put a rattle on here I'm still not sold on these I'm not sure they make a difference or not I catch fish without them I catch fish with them but sometimes I'll add a little rattle on there so we'll do it this time and then I'm gonna take a three-way swivel I'm gonna tie it to the main line side of the swivel just use a clinch knot that's what I use most of the time, unless I'm using braid, and then I use a polymer knot. So we're using four ounce weights today to drag with, because we got a little bit of current. If we didn't have any current, we'd use two and a half ounces. I've got two and a half ounces, four ounces, and six ounces, depending on how much current I've got or how fast I'm gonna go. Or sometimes in really, really deep water, you need a little heavier weight too, just because of all the resistance on the line. These are made by SanteeDrifters.com. They're made really well. They're all handmade, shrink wrapped ends, and they got really, really fine bird shot in them, really fine lead shot. So they're really, really flexible. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, they do such a good job dragging. I hardly ever, I've lost one of these and I fish with these things a lot. The most important thing about these uh, 
dragon weights or any type of weight for that matter is the price because I mean let's face it they are disposable there's no snag free weight you're gonna lose them all eventually uh, these are priced right uh, good guy makes them and sells them he sells them cheap and if you want to check them out guys I'll put a I'll put a coupon code in the description below it'll get you 15% off on these things and now we're ready to tie it onto our main line here this is 40 pound Andy Andy monster blue main line I like monofilament 90% of the time. The only time I really use braid is if I'm uh, using the bumping technique and then I like, you pretty much have to use braid for that so you can feel the bottom. Another clinch knot, improved clinch knot. Clinch it down. Now that's ready to go, that simple. So we got some skipjack and some shad. tell you what we'll use a shad just for example because I've already got one big bait out all right so normally you would hook your bait right here and you'd be done right well what happens a lot of times if these fish aren't really aggressive if they're not biting real good they'll come up and just kind of grab the back of that bait as soon as they feel that resistance they're gone but with this technique you take this second hook and you got to bring it in. I don't really know how to explain it. I'll just have to show you. You just want to bring the tip of that hook in like this. And then bring it back out. And I don't like my line to be really, really tight when I do that. I want a little bit of slack right here. If, those, if that line's pulled real tight, it'll make the bait ride funny in the water. All right, now that I got my hooks in, I'm just going to cut the excess off. The advantage to using a bigger bait like this, for one thing, it puts a lot more scent in the water. Another thing is it lasts a lot longer. What I mean by that, if you just put a chunk out, if you just put a chunk of bait like this out, 10 or 15 minutes, all the blood and oil is pretty much gone out of it. Now you can still catch some fish on it, but for the most part, it's a you know it's pretty much done. Uh, you go put a whole skipjack or a whole shad on. You can fish with that bait for an hour, pull it in, there's still gonna be blood and oil running out of it. Now, not every day is this a good idea. Sometimes they want the little bitty baits, especially on a day like today when we got really high pressure. Uh, sometimes you gotta put little bitty baits in the water just to get them to pick it up. But uh, I always like to run at least one rig like this. And you'd be surprised how many times that's the one that catches the fish. We're running planer boards, one on each side of the boat. We're dragging two right behind the boat. Since I had plenty of bait, I put two uh, two rods that are suspended. And we've actually caught two of the four fish today on the suspended rod. I seen that board doing something funny earlier. I didn't think much of it. The rod never moved. I guess he's been swimming at the boat for the last 20 minutes. And that's what I was talking about with the big baits, guys. That fish right there somehow took the whole skipjack. And it's not that big of a fish. It was a, it was a bait. It was a bait just like that one right there. And that fish, it's not even that much bigger than the bait, somehow got that in his mouth and got hooked. And you can see he had the bait in his mouth pretty deep because he's hooked super, super deep. It just barely missed his eye there. Let her grow up. That's a nice blue and I still got my bait on there. Not even that big of a fish and look at the size of the bait he ate, guys. Gosh. And that's why we like to use the double hook rigs on big baits. Yeah. We got him though. There we go. Oh. It's like an like hour. If he wasn't hungry, look at the bait compared to the fish. They're eating big baits, that's what we're gonna give them. So there's proof that you can catch the smaller blue cats on big baits using this rig, but you can also catch a lot of big fish on this rig too. 
Here's a video clip of me and some friends catching a 50 pound blue cat a couple of days ago out on the Ohio River. This fish ate a whole skipjack with the same double hook rig in it that I just showed you guys how to tie. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that is a beast. Oh. That is a beast. That might be a seven. Oh, it's tangled in one. They got him. Woo! There you go, That's what I'm talking about. Give me yeah. some, boy. Look at that hook set. He wasn't ever oh. going anywhere. I just got one so far. Can you hold his tail Maybe. out this way? There's Thank like you. eight cameras in there. So that's a little trick for you guys that might help you sometime. It's just something else to add to your arsenal. I think it'll help some of you guys put some more fish in the boat. Don't be scared to put a big piece of bait on there, guys. At least one big piece of bait every time you go out. Thank you guys for watching. As always, God bless. We'll see you guys in the next one.